Hello, welcome to the video on the distributive property. And I want to go ahead and state right from the beginning that this is an extremely important property. Um, and so you really want to pay attention. But let's go and take a look at our objectives for the lesson. We want to go ahead and learn and apply the distributive property to numerical expressions. And we'll do some examples here to um, clarify that. And then we also want to apply the distributive property to algebraic expressions. So let's go ahead and define the distributive property. Okay, I think a neat way of defining the distributive property is to kind of see its uh, usefulness in a problem. So let me go ahead and ask you to go ahead and simplify 3 times 4 plus 2. All right, so as you should know by now that when you have grouping symbols like parentheses, you have to do what's inside of them first. Okay, recall from the order of operations, we have to do uh, the parentheses first. So here I have to go 3 times 4 plus 2 is 6. Okay, now I can do my multiplication after I simplify what was in the parentheses. So 3 times 6 is 18. And you would be perfectly correct. However, there's another way of doing this, and this is where the distributive property comes in. And the distributive property, the key word here is distributive. Okay, distributive means you're kind of going to pass something out to something else. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. So let's do the same problem, but this time I'm going to apply the distributive property. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 3 and I'm going to have it being multiplied by this 4. Okay, I'm going to take the 3 and I'm going to multiply it by, by the 4. And then I'm going to take the 3 and multiply it by this 2. All right, and then when I add up the sum of those two products, I'm going to get the same answer. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So 3 times 4, let's write it this way. 3 times 4 plus, okay, because we're doing a sum here. 3 times 2, okay, I'm telling you is going to be 18. So let's go through it. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 3 times 2 is 6. 12 plus 6 is 18. Okay. And basically, the reason why we can do this is because of the distributive property. So the distributive property is another way to multiply sums, okay, sum of numbers and or variables. Okay, it also works in differences. We're going to go explore the distributive property and I think the best way to see it is just to see it in action. Okay, so let me just scroll down here, kind of give you the uh, technical formula for the distributive property. So if you have a textbook, a math book, or you might have seen all this here, and all this A's and B's, if you just notice here, this A times that B, we would write as A times B plus this a times that c, c would be um, a c okay and all it means is that we're going to take the number that we're going to multiply by and multiply it by the inner number here we're calling b so 2 times 6 would be 12 2 times 4 would be 8 but as you can see here there's these are there's a little bit of a um, variation with the distributive property and um, the problems i have next to the rules are just the different um, uh, variations that you might see distributive properties come at you. But let's go ahead and do these problems down here. Okay. So let's take a look at these first here. These are numerical expressions, and that's how I wanted to break this up. So these are numerical expressions, and we'll talk about the variable expressions down here in a second. Okay. So we're going to apply the distributive property. It's a very simple property, but sometimes students, um, for whatever reason, they have a I have an initial problem. Either they get it or they don't get it. That's been my experience from the beginning. Okay, so if you're, if you're struggling a little bit, more practice, you'll get it. Okay, so we're going to go 2 times 6. So I'll write it out this way. 2 times 6 times plus, okay, because this is addition, 2 times 4. All right, now we can simplify that. That's going to be 12 plus 8. So that's going to be 20. Okay. Now, we could see here, this would be 2 times the sum of 6 and 4, which would be 10. So our answer is correct. But I'm not looking for you to actually find the sum, okay, or the uh, product of these sums or differences. What we're doing here is a pr uh, practicing applying the distributive property. Okay. Now, the distributive property works. Let's give ourselves some more room. The distributive property, you don't have to have the number in front of the sum. You could have it in the back here. Okay, this is 
you rarely see it this way, but all the dis distributor property, the rules state, well, you can also go this way, two times four and two times six. So you could write it as, let's see here, let's write it in its proper order, six times two plus four times two. Okay, and where we get 20 once again. Now the neat thing about the distributor property is, is that it works also with differences, not just sums. Okay, so why don't you pause the video and I want you to go ahead and do, let's give ourselves some room here, the next problem. Okay, let's see if you have the distributor property yet. Okay, go ahead and do this problem using the distributor property. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is you're going to go 7 times 8. And if you feel comfortable, you can write it this way, 7 times 8. Now instead of adding, you're going to subtract. And you're going to subtract 7 times 5. All right, now with experience, you don't have to write it out this way. You can just go 7 times 8 and figure out what the um, product's going to be. So this would be 56 minus 35. So 56 minus 35 is 21. Okay. Now we have the same problem here. You could do it the same way. You can go 8 times 7 minus 5 times 7, and you would still get the same answer, 21. All right, so that's all the distributive property rules we're stating up here, is that whether the number is on the right-hand side or it's a, it's a difference problem or the number is on the left-hand side and it's a difference problem or it's a, uh, an addition problem, okay, the distributive property applies in all four scenarios. All right, so let's get to applying the distributive property with um, variable and algebraic expressions. Really, really important in algebra. Super important. Okay. All right. So the same thing applies. We're going to take this negative two. And we're going to multiply it by the y. Okay. That's the first part of the distributive property. When we do that, we get negative two y. All right. Negative two y. Remember, this expression in algebra means ne a negative two times a y. All right. So now we're going to take this negative two and we're going to multiply it by one, a positive one. So at this point, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming, and if you don't know, you need to go back and review, I'm assuming you know how to add, subtract, multiply um, real numbers, okay, integers. You know your rules with positive and negative numbers. Okay, so negative 2 plus, or a negative 2 times a positive 1 is a negative 2, and we just write that just like this, okay, or you could write it plus negative, all right? Okay, let's move on. Let's do some more examples here. And of course, I encourage you to look at the example sets when uh, we're done with the lesson, because you really want to master this. Let's go on to the next problem. Okay, if you want to go ahead and try it, definitely encourage you to do that. So we have 9x, okay, not just the 9, we have to multiply the, take the 9 and the x and multiply it by each one of these um, components of the sum. Okay, each one of these numbers. Let's do a different number here, green. All right, so let's go ahead and set this up. This would be 9x times, okay, the first thing we're going to multiply is x, plus that 9x again times 2. All right. So let's go ahead and simplify this. 9x times x, okay, hopefully you know that this is going to be 9x squared. All right, if you're having trouble with this, I would go back and take a look at uh, variables, some of the previous uh, chapter lessons to make sure you understand this, okay? But x times x is x squared, all right? So this is going to be plus 9 times 2. We multiply the numbers in this situation. 9 times a x times a 2. So that would be 18. We multiply the numbers together here, 18x. All right. I hope, I really hope that you're getting comfortable with this and... Um, if not, don't worry about it. We're going to do a lot of problems here, a lot of example problems. You'll see it over and over in your study of mathematics. But the sooner you get this, obviously, the better. Okay, so you want to go ahead and try this particular problem. Negative y times y is, okay, that's going to be a negative y squared. Okay, a negative times a positive is going to be negative. All right, so if we wanted to see this the long way, that would be negative y times y. Remember, any you can write these when you're multiplying the same variable by itself or the same number by itself. For example, 2 times 2 
Okay, you can use powers, and that's what we want to do. That's the same thing as 2 squared. All right. Likewise, y times y, we could write as y squared. And that's how you want to write your um, uh, products, okay, when you're multiplying by the same uh, number or variable. Okay, but we're not done here. We have to multiply negative y times 5. All right, so negative y times a positive 5 will be a negative 5y. Okay, so negative y squared plus negative 5y. Right? Get a negative times a positive, and remember multiplication, this means negative 5 times y. It's as far as you can go, and there's the answer. All right, so let's give ourselves some room and do this last problem. And hopefully with enough experience, you can just kind of, you don't even have to draw these lines. I'm just doing this to help, uh, help you uh, learn here. So it's going to be 3t times 2t. So that would be 6t squared. All right, now I'm going to take this 3t and multiply it by this 4. Now there's a different sign here, subtraction sign. So I'm going to go and write that minus this 3t times 4. That would be 12t. And there is uh, the answer. Now let's take a look at why the distributive property is so important, especially when it comes uh, into algebra. Now, remember, when we had numbers, if I had 4 times 5 plus 1, we could always say, okay, 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 times 4 is 24, and that was great. But we were able to add these like components. These are numbers. We can add them up. But look here. We have 2t and we have 4. We can't, we can't, make, we can't add these up. We can't subtract these. This is as simple as this expression is going to get. However, the power of the distributive property is... Instead of writing it this way, there's, the distributive property will allow me to write that same expression in another way, okay? Where I get rid of these parentheses symbols and say 6t squared minus 12t is the same as this over here. And that is the power of the distributive property, okay? All right, so let's go ahead. And um, I actually enjoy these type of problems here. So let's apply the distributive property to these uh, products. Okay, so you're saying, well, I don't see a sum or a difference. No, you're right. Okay, 4 times 23. Okay, that's a very easy problem. However, let's kind of use the distributive property in a backwards way to do the same problem. Let me show. I'll do the first one. You can do the next two. What I'm going to do with 23 is I'm going to make a sum or a difference that will add up to 23 inside the parentheses. So watch. Let me 4 times, hmm, let me see here, 20 plus 3. Okay, 20 plus 3 is 23, okay, times 4. So these problems are equivalent. But why would I do something like that? Well, I did it so I can apply the distributive property. All right, it's like a little trick. So it's going to be 4 times 20. Let's write it out. 4 times 20 plus 4 times 3. Now, the reason why I chose 23 is because these are easy numbers to multiply. 4 times 20 is 80. 80 plus... 12 is 92, okay? So let's say, oh, off the top of your head, you, you wanted to multiply this and you didn't want to go through this trouble. Let's see, 23 times 4, 4 times 3 is 12. That's going to be 8, 9, 92. Well, you could also do this um, problem using the distributive property, All right? Why don't you go ahead and try the next two, okay? Now remember, you can come up with your own or any um, sum or difference that you'd like. All right, let's do this one a little bit different. Um, let me see here. How about we make 16 the same as 20 minus 4? Okay, 20 minus 4 is 16. All right, so now what we're going to do, let me move this over. We're going to multiply 3 times 20 minus 16 using the distributive property. All right, let's see if we get the same answer. 3 times 20 is 60, all right, minus 3 times 4, which is 12. So let's see here. 60 minus 12 is 48. Okay, so let's go ahead and check. Is 3 times 16 48? Well, in fact, it is, okay? Now you very well could have you you could have uh, used uh, another way of doing this. Maybe 
you wanted to say, okay, let's see here, 16, I wanted to go 3 times 8 plus 8. Okay, and you said, oh, 3 times 8 is 24, plus 3 times 8 is 24, okay, 48. However you wanted to do it. See, the distributive property works in any situation. Okay, let's take a look at this last problem. 7 times 54, so if I wanted to get this answer very quickly, let me see here, I'm looking for easy numbers to split this up. So I'm going to go 7 times 50 plus 4, okay, oops, 7 times 50 is 350, oops, 350, 7 times 4, 28, okay, so let's go ahead and take uh, 28 plus 350, 378, okay, let's just check ourselves, 7 times 54, in fact, it's 378. So you see how this uh, works. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our review for this lesson. First thing, the distributive property is extremely important in math, especially in algebra and beyond. Okay, I rarely bold anything in uh, the videos, but this is one of these things where you must, must know. It's just going to be all over the place. It's extremely important. Okay, and we've seen how it applies when we multiply a sum when we're multiplying a number by a sum or a difference. Okay, it works in both uh, scenarios. And um, last but not least, we can use it with variables and uh, numbers or a combination thereof. All right, definitely encourage you to go ahead and take a look at the um, example set prompts and please master this and uh, good luck.